Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Michelle. I've been an SAT math tutor for the past 10 years. So if you're prepping for your SAT or you're starting to prep and you're ahead of the game for your PSAT, um, subscribe down below. We're gonna have new videos every Sunday and um, Wednesday. And if you have any topics that you guys want me to go over, just comment down below and I'll try to incorporate that in my next lesson. So today we're gonna be talking about circles. The tough part about circles is a lot of the times you need to mark up your diagram. So you have to stay really neat with how you're marking up your diagram. And you're gonna to need to make extensions to your diagram that may not be obvious at first. But hopefully as you learn some of these strategies today and we do some of these challenging problems, you start to get used to some of these clever solutions and you can see that you'll apply them to other problems on the SAT, even though the diagram might be slightly different. And that's the trick with the SAT. Honestly, you start learning some of these strategies and you realize that they're being tested and tested over and over again, just with different problems and numbers. So let's get really comfortable with some of the challenging and clever solutions today. And hopefully you can you know, start getting used to them and apply them when you do your own practice problems on your own. Okay, basic stuff. Area, pi r squared. Circumference, the same as your perimeter, right? Just a fancy way of saying perimeter, it's a distance around the circle. Um, you can find that two ways. You can either do pi times diameter, or the one that you should get very comfortable with is two pi r, two times the radius times pi. Um, I say that because a lot of the times you're going to be using the two interchangeably, and a lot of the times it's helpful to have that radius in, in the formula. Last but not least, your circle is 360 degrees. Let's jump right into a problem to get started today. So this one says, if the circumference of a circle is one, so I have circumference, what is the radius of the circle? So this is exactly what I mean. I know my circumference is pi times diameter, but in this case, it makes more sense to use that other formula with two, time, two times pi times r. So circumference is two pi r. And here's another tricky thing. A lot of the times people think that the answer to your area or circumference is gonna have the pi. In this case, it doesn't. They're giving us that it's just one. So that's all we write. I'm gonna write two pi r is equal to one. I'm looking for my radius, so I'm gonna to try to isolate that r by dividing each side by two pi. That crosses out and I just get radius is one over two pi. And I look very carefully at my answer choices. So many students get the right answer and just in a rush pick the wrong answer choice. In this case, A matches exactly to one over two pi. You can also solve this one by working backwards, but in my opinion, in this case, back solving will actually take you longer. So just be very careful and, and read your problems and translate them into math. And um, if you're careful enough and you don't rush through your problems, you'll get the right answer. And that's something I always tell my students. You don't always have to get the most challenging ones right. You just really can't get the easy ones wrong. If you can nail your easy ones, you know, every, every answer on the SAT is worth the same amount. So try to get, make sure you don't make silly mistakes on your easy ones. Okay, inscribed angles. This is an important topic. A lot of the times this is where your diagrams get really tricky and knowing these two facts will be extremely helpful. So central angle. Your central angle is always the angle that's formed with the center of the circle. So it's this angle X here. And that angle X, is always equal to the arc, the degree measure of the arc that it intersects. So, or inscribes. Angle X is gonna be the same degree measure as your arc BC. Now, for your inscribed angle, which is your Y, it's basically that angle that's formed with one side of the circle. Your angle Y is going to be one half or half that arc AB, or in this case, BC. And the trick with the inscribed angles that I want you guys to always do is rewrite that formula somewhere on your paper. A lot of the times students get confused of when do I multiply by two? When do I take a half? You know, that can get a little confusing. I guarantee if you just write it out for yourself, you know, angle Y is one half BC, you'll be able to see what your correct answer is really simply. Okay, let's work on one example together. So determine the measure of the inscribed angle CDB if you're given the measure of angle CAB is 40. So I'm gonna mark up my diagram. So CAB is 40 and I'm looking for this angle here. Well, right off the bat, I notice CAB is my central angle, right? It's that angle being formed with the center. So I know my arc is gonna be exactly equal to that angle, which is 40. The next thing I notice, and I'll do this in a different color for you guys. The next thing I notice is that angle CDB is an inscribed angle. It's an angle formed with one, one point on the circle. And that actually is inscribed 
in the same arc, right? So that arc BC is going to be double that angle, inscribed angle. So again, I'm gonna, you know, that's confusing for me. I'm gonna write out my, my, my inscribed angle formula. So angle X is going to be one half the arc BC. So angle X is gonna be one half of 40. What's one half of 40? 20, so my X is equal to 20. So again, I even confused myself there for a second, but as soon as I wrote down that formula or that fact, I was able to kind of work it out myself. This is one that gained a lot of popularity on my TikTok. So if you don't follow my TikTok, I'm gonna have it linked down below. I do a problem every day. Um, yes, there's more than one way to do this one, but I'm going to be using my inscribed in, uh, central angle facts here as well. So I'm looking for angle X and I'm being given these two other angles. The trick here is, again, this weird extension and knowing when to extend. If I extend A, B to this point of the circle and call this D, then I automatically notice that this is another inscribed angle. And again, my inscribed angle is one half the arc that it inscribes. So one half the arc it inscribes. So one half of what number gives me 20? Oh, 40, right? 40, so 20 is one half of 40. It's always half the size of that arc. I'm gonna do the same thing with that other arc down here. I'm gonna extend AC to this new point E. Same thing, if this is 20 and it's inscribed, then this one's 40. So how does that help me get X? Well, now here's the really tricky part. I'm actually gonna notice that if I create a central angle with the two lines I extended, I'll be able to find angle P, right? Because this, this is a central angle. It's the angle form with the center. And it's gonna be exactly equal to the length or the degree measure, I should say, of this entire arc. So angle P is really 40 plus 40, which is just 80. Last little nuanced here, vertical angles. If you're not comfortable with this, there'll be a geometry lesson that you can look up. But vertical angles are basically these angles that are formed with the two intersecting lines, and they're always equivalent. So if this is 40, this is 40. In our case, both of them are 80. So X is also 80. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. If not, you can check out my TikTok. I have a lot of comments that show different solutions, but I wanted to show how can I use this information that I already know without introducing sine and cosine, anything too complicated. Write triangles inscribed in circles. Um, also a really important fact and handy fact to know and not every, so most people who don't study for the SAT or don't study very hard won't actually know this. So you have that leg up if you do learn this very well. So here's the trick with this one. Anytime you have a triangle inside of a circle and one of your sides is actually the diameter, then you know your triangle is a right triangle. I'm gonna say that again because it was a little complicated. Anytime one side of a triangle that's inside of a circle is the diameter, so in this case, AC is the diameter, is also the side, then I know that ABC is going to be a 90 degree angle. And so how do I know that? Well, let's walk through the math one time. And after this, you'll never have to walk through the math again. Well, again, it goes back to these inscribed angles. So I know my diameter splits my circle into two equal parts. So I know that arc AC is gonna be half of 360, right? Because it's 360 all the way around, so half of that is gonna be 180. Great, so if that's 180, I notice that ABC is my inscribed angle, and so it's gonna be one half of that arc. So what's one half of 180? 90. Basically, moving forward, anytime you have a triangle inscribed in a circle, and you see that one of the sides of the triangle is the diameter, it goes through the center of the circle, you have a right triangle. And you can use that fact to your advantage to save a lot of time. So let's take a look at an example. Triangle ABC is inscribed in the circle and line AC passes through the center of the circle. Cool, there we go, it passes through the center. This side of the triangle is going to be the diameter. If that's the case, we just learned that angle B is gonna be 90 degrees. Great, I have a right triangle, triangle ABC is a right triangle. If the length of line segment AB is three and the length of line segment AC is five, what is the length of BC? So we're looking for BC, this side here. 
Well, you can do Pythagorean's theorem, or if you're familiar, and this is one that you should know, this is one of your Pythagorean triples. It basically says a special Pythagorean triple that anytime you have a right triangle and your sides are three, five, your other side will always be four. It's called a three, four, five triangle. So if I see a three and a five, I know that side's gonna be four. If I see a four and a five, I know the side's gonna be three. So in this case, we're missing that four. So I know that BC will be four without having to go through A squared and the whole Pythagorean theorem. Um, and that's my answer, right? BC is four. So here, two things to know. The special fact that AC is your um, side of a triangle and is also a diameter, so that angle B is 90. Right away, you see it's a right triangle. You could either use Pythagorean theorem, or in this case, an even faster way to save time is knowing your special right triangles. If you're not familiar with these, there's three, four, five, five, twelve. There's a few of them. I'll definitely do a video on them. Um, but yeah, so again, it comes in really handy on SAT problems. Let's do a tougher one now. In the figure above, triangle ABC is inscribed in the circle with center O and diameter AC. Again, we have the diameter and it's a side of a triangle. So that entire angle B is going to be 90 degrees. Great, see if that helps me. Now I see if AB is equal to AO, what is the degree measure of ABO? That's a lot of, a lot of words. Let me write, let me actually put that on my diagram. So AB is equal to AO, cool. And I'm looking for ABO. Be very careful here. A lot of my students try to do this one really quick and they'll circle 90. Why is 90 wrong? 90 is wrong because we're not looking at the angle ABC, which is the right angle. We're actually looking for ABO, which is this angle here, which is actually just this little angle here inside that 90 degree. So E is actually not your answer. But the only thing, so they're not testing the whole right triangle here. What they're testing and to see if you can recognize is your radius could come from any point on the circle, any point from the center of the circle to any point on the circle. So your radius could look like this, it could look like this, it could look like this. So what I notice here is that AO is a radius. I also notice, and we know that AB is equal to AO, they give us that, but I see that OB is actually a radius too. So it's gonna be the same as AO. So what do I get? I get a triangle with three sides that are the same. So it's an equilateral triangle. And what do we know about equilateral triangles? All of your angles are gonna be 60 degrees. In this case, my answer is D. So here they were really testing, one, could you see that BO is a radius, right? And they didn't tell you that. They kind of drew your attention to the other side. And a lot of people start thinking about isosceles triangles. The clever thing here is to notice that BO is also a radius. And then once you see that, and you see that you have three sides that are equal, knowing that it's 60, 60, 60. That 90 degree there is actually there to trick you. So this, this is one of the questions that's punishing the people that get too comfortable with knowing formulas and knowing tricks, right? So you, it's very good to know tricks, as you saw in the last problem. We now know that triangle trick that's inside of a circle. But be careful, because a lot of the times the SAT is going to also try to make you lose points, even though you studied really hard. So make sure you're really using the information that you know in the correct way. Okay, finding arc length. This is basically finding a piece of the circle that's on the diameter uh, that's on the circumference right you're looking for like the length of one piece of a circle and the key thing with that with knowing here in this formula is really you're always looking part to whole part to whole so the formula states that x over 360 so your angle of that little sector over the total degrees in a circle 360 is equal to the arc length of that little section to the circumference of the whole circle. A lot of the times people get confused here and they'll do arc length over area. My tip is whether, when you're talking about arc length, you're talking about length, right? So you're talking about perimeter, you're talking about circle, you're not talking about area, you're not talking about that inside part, you're just talking about that little outside section, right? So think circumference. Honestly, this formula, if you know how to apply it, you usually get these ones right. So let's see how we do it with this one. We're given what is the length of arc AB? So I'm looking for AB. I'm given this central angle, which is great. I'm also given the radius, right? So this is a radius. Radius is three. So again, I'm going to do 60 degrees over the total degrees in a circle, which is 360 part to whole. 
is equal to, well, I'm looking for the length of AB, so I'm gonna write AB or you can write X, and I'm gonna put that over the circumference, right? I'm looking for the, the entire circumference around the circle. So how do I find circumference? Well, two pi R, so R is three, so we get six pi, right? That's my circumference. And now I just cross multiply. So I get 60 times six pi is equal to AB times 360. I want AB by itself, so I'm gonna divide both sides by 360. And here we could kind of just simplify if you know your algebra really well. So I'm gonna say six goes into 36 six times and six and six cross out. So we just get pi. And your answer is just A. So don't be afraid of the answer that might look wrong. Sometimes it's right. A lot of people might feel like, oh, pi without a number, that just seems wrong. In this case, it's one of your answers. It's another trick that the SAT puts on the exam. A lot of the times the one that looks wrong is right. Um, so just be very careful. All right, last little fact, area of a sector. So same concept as arc length. We're gonna do part to whole. So we know that your angle of this little sector is X and it's gonna be over 360. And your area of the sector is going to be over the total area of the circle. So let's take a look at a problem here. We have given circle O with minor arc AB is equal to 60. So I'm just gonna put that in my diagram right away. So AB is 60. And OA is 12, so OA is my radius. I know that's going from the center to a point. What is the area of sector AOB? So I'm looking for the area of this whole thing. Well, what's my problem here? I don't have the, I'm not given that angle in the center, but I know from my previous slides that this is a central angle, right? Angle O is your central angle. And a central angle is always, exactly equal to the arc that it bisects. So angle O is going to be equal to that 60 degrees. So now I, now I have my angle, so I know 60 degrees over 360 degrees is going to be equal to, well, I'm looking for the area of AB, so I'm just gonna make that an X. And what's the total area of the circle? Well, how do I find total area of a circle? Pi R squared, so we have R is 12, so pi R squared is gonna equal to 12 squared pi, which is 144 pi. So that's gonna be my area, that's gonna be my denominator there. And now we can just cross multiply. So if we cross multiply, I'm actually gonna simplify first to make this look a little bit neater. So I get 1 sixth, right? Six goes into 36 six times. 1 sixth is equal to x over 144. That just looks a little neater to me. Now I'm gonna cross multiply. We get 144 pi is equal to six x. I'm gonna divide both sides by six and I get X is equal to, well, six goes into 14 two times, two left over, 24. My answer is 24 pi. And that's it. I hope you found this to be a little helpful. I'm gonna do a, um, a circle part two um, video just to go over the formula for a circle um, and how that relates to a coordinate plane. So that's gonna be the next video, stay tuned. Um, and practice, 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 practice. I know everyone hates to hear it, um, but a lot of these strategies, you know, they might seem really clever, clever when you see them the first time, still might be a little clever the second time, by the third or fourth time you're using it like, like this. So stay tuned and thank you guys for watching, bye.